Secretary General of the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. Thanks so much for speaking to us. You know, first of all, everyone had been bracing for an outbreak in the already severely overcrowded refugee and migrant camps where there are very few, if any, medical resources at the best of times. Now we have those reports of 20 cases at one refugee camp in Greece. What needs to be done now to get that under control? First of all, thank you for having me. Uh, as you outlined the, the situation of the refugee camps or the, 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 the informal settlements, the, the slums uh, around the big cities. Um, so basically, in already normal situations, these are the places with the very poor sanitary conditions, very uh, weak health, health, health facilities. So of course, things like this puts a tremendous pressure uh, there. So, and some of the examples you gave already showed that. So there are a number of things that should be done. The, the f best thing that needs to be done is to uh, do our best to contain the virus so it doesn't reach more camp. Uh, and in a number of countries, I think the governments have put measures, the organizations like ourselves have been supporting those measures to prevent the infections reaching the camp. But we should, we should also be preparing uh, for the unfortunate situation that the infection could reach the camps. And there, there has to be a significant investment on preparedness, preparing the communities with the right information, stocking of the PPE materials in those uh, camps or the, around those camps so uh, the, 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 the sufficient protective materials are available for the, uh, for the healthcare workers. But also there has to be a preparedness for the mitigation measures in case the virus reaches the camps there has to be the basic hospital facilities, isolation facilities, the treatment facilities to ensure that it doesn't uh, reach, reach further. Of course, right. the issue around the physical distancing becomes extremely, extremely difficult in the, in, in the camp environment. Uh, so the best way is to try to prevent uh, the, the virus reaching those camps. And you say there needs to be significant investment. I mean, is that investment being made right now because it's already started? I think the, uh, uh, my sense very much is that uh, the organization like ourselves, you know, if I give an example of Coxus Bazaar in Bangladesh, we are putting all what we have, both in preparedness and also in prevention measures. Is it enough? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, and I'm just giving you one example, but there are many other settlements, the informal settlement. Uh, so the investment is uh, lacking very much. Uh, and of course, it is an understandable situation that the, the, the resources are needed everywhere. But if we don't invest on these uh, uh, situations, I think the, 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 we could be waiting for a catastrophe. Right. So I urge basically all the governments and organizations like ourselves, the UN systems, to pay particular attention to the refugee camps, the crowded places uh, like the slums. I, I think it needs to be said that this is everybody's problem. If there's an uncontrolled outbreak in any of these camps, we are all... Uh, going to be at risk. So what areas, pinpoint, are you most worried about right now? I think, uh, as you mentioned, you know, no, but no country is safe until every country is safe uh, in these situations, and no community is safe until all the communities are safe. So, of course, we are worried about uh, basically every part of the world, but particularly we are worried about the, 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 the countries where there are uh, large refugee camps, we are worried about the countries where the, the health, settle, uh, health systems are weak. Uh, as you know, the, the number of cases are increasing uh, in parts of Africa, uh, in, in, in many parts of Asia, including India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. Um, also, the, uh, the countries where there is a protracted, long protracted uh, conflict or the active conflict. So these are the places I think that worries us the most. Uh, and again, to emphasize that until and unless every country is safe, no country is safe. Okay, Jagan Chapagin joining us there from Geneva. Thank you so much for sharing your insight. We appreciate it.